Now, this is the season of election launches, and today is the turn of the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition. We have more than 500 candidates standing in the local elections, and we're joined now by Dave Nellis. He's the national chair of the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition. The trouble with politicians is they're all the same. Well, that's not only true, but it's never been more true than it is today. Labour says it will be tough on welfare, tougher than the Tories. Then the Tories say they're going to hire Tony Blair's NHS advisor in order to carry on Labour's policy of competition in the NHS. Then Labour says it'll match Tory cuts pound for pound. And UKIP says they'll cut £77 billion more. And they all prefer rescuing the bankers to building homes and guaranteeing jobs and decent incomes for young people. I mean, I've just finished working on a zero-hours contract and tried to organise my staff to try and fight them. Never policies for the millions, always looking after the millionaires. And that's because well over half the Cabinet are millionaires. And you never hear UKIP's Nigel Farage criticise the bankers because he used to be one. What we need is a new opposition based on old socialist principles rooted in the communities and the organisations of the working class on our side for the 99%, not the 1%. And we've got one. It's called the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition. It's a bit of a mouthful, so it's Tusk for short. Tusk was the idea of the late Bob Crow, who until his untimely death was the General Secretary of the Transport Union, the RMT. Bob co-founded Tusk four years ago because of a lack of an independent voice for working people. Bob didn't just decide that he was going to set up a political party. The RMT is a very democratic structure. And every year, our annual general meeting sends, has delegates from all around the country that are sent there from their branches to represent the wishes of the members. For a, we're a very grassroots organisation, and it was the wish of that AGM that we set up an alternative party to fight for working people and trade unionists in this country. For we've been failed by the party that the RMT in its former incarnations of the NUR, National Union of Railmen, helped to establish over a hundred years ago. Starting afresh isn't easy. It took the Labour Party quite a good few years to get going. Tusk is standing 560 candidates in 87 towns, cities and boroughs. 560 seats is the biggest left of Labour challenge for 60 years. Three quarters of our candidates are active trade unionists, including 50 from the RMT itself and almost 140 from Unite, the biggest trade union. Um, as I said, I'm a member of the RMT and uh, very much uh, uh, support the, the, the project. The rest include anti-bedroom tax activists, anti-fracking activists, anti-cuts campaigners, and all are standing for Tusk. So why should you vote for Tusk? Firstly, it sends a message to all the big parties that you're opposed to you and your family paying for the gambling and the speculation of the bankers that got us into this mess in the first place. Secondly, it's to tell local councillors to stop cutting our services. And if you've lost your library, your youth centre or the care for your elderly parents, does it really matter whether it was a decision made enthusiastically by the Tories or with a heavy heart by Labour? Cuts hurt just the same. I didn't find the decision to vote against them difficult. When the cuts began to be introduced, and the very first of them hit my own ward, I had no difficulty, along with my colleague, Councillor Don Thomas, in mounting a campaign to save our local public facility at swimming pool. The cuts aren't necessary. This is still an extremely rich country. Britain's five richest families own more than 12 million poorest combined. And what does that lead to? Housing becoming unaffordable for most people in normal jobs. Millions of families even just one paycheck away from losing their home. And already one million people relying on food banks. In many cases because of benefits, sanctions and pressures and penalties. Millions are either unemployed or underemployed and desperate for work. Like the 1,500 people who queued for three hours in Shropshire for one Aldi supermarket job. But for many, even getting a job doesn't bring security. Nearly half of all the big firms in Britain now employ some people on zero-hour contracts. A generation of young people face a bleak future because of high youth unemployment. And those who do go to university risk coming out with up to £50,000 of debt. 
So the reason I'm standing in Barsley is I feel a moral obligation. I can't, on one hand, spend my working life representing uh, workers in the prison service uh, and then when I retire, uh, do nothing for the people who I respect and love and the people in my community around me. Um, I have to say this, if I didn't stand for Tusk, uh, my grandchildren are six years old and 18 months old. Uh, as they grow up, I couldn't look them in the eye if I didn't try to do something against austerity. So what are we going to do about it? In a few days' time, you'll get the chance to vote for who runs your local council. The big establishment parties have an overlapping agenda wanting us to pay for the crisis triggered by the banks. It wasn't ordinary working people or our families that caused this crisis. It was the bankers and the system for the rich. They should pay, not us. So let's get better organised. If you're in one of the towns, cities or boroughs where we've got candidates, vote for Tusk on May the 22nd. If you're not, get in touch and help us build for the future. Next year, you could become one of the candidates really worth voting for. Can you send us a donation? Unions have given the Labour Party one third of a billion pounds over the last 30 years, and the unions and the left have less influence now than they did 100 years ago. Clause 4, gone. The promise of full employment, gone. The pledge for public ownership of gas, water and electricity, gone. A plan to narrow the gap between the rich and the rest, gone. Labour takes ordinary working people for granted. We don't and we won't. The Tories, Liberal Democrats, Labour and UKIP all offer a future of continued austerity for the majority whilst the top 1% continue to get richer. But it doesn't have to be like this. There's over 120 billion uncollected in taxes every year, mainly from the super rich and from big business. There's plenty of money that could be invested in decent jobs, in social housing, in repairing the NHS and a whole wealth of other things that would massively improve our standard of living. And that's what makes us different. Tusk stands for a democratic socialist society to rationally plan our wealthy society in the interest of people, not of millionaires. That means putting the major companies and the banks that dominate the economy into democratic public ownership then production and services could be planned to meet the needs of all while still protecting the environment. I believe Tusk is a very, very important step in this country in order to give ordinary people a political voice. So, if you're angry about cutbacks to public services, if you're fed up with privatisation of the NHS and the fragmentation of education, if you're frustrated by the lack of decent, affordable housing, if you're enraged over zero-hour contracts and low-paid jobs, if you're disgusted with politicians who line their own pockets and help the richest 1% whilst doing nothing from the rest, then Tusk was formed for you. Where you can, please vote for Tusk on May the 22nd and join us in building a new voice for working class people. Thank you. We gotta take the power back!